You are listening to Keep Canada Weird, a weekly weird news roundup by the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the weekly Keep Canada Weird discussion series. If you're new here, my name is Jordan Bonaparte, and in Keep Canada Weird, my pal Aaron Airport and I seek out and explore the more offbeat news stories that played out across Canada over the past week. In tonight's episode, which we recorded on June the 11th of 2024, Aaron and I explore the controversy surrounding comedian Rob Schneider's failed performance at a Regina charity event. We board ourselves up in a BC bedroom as a bear trashes the house. We hop on the magic school bus, which seems to be in Guelph, Ontario. And we consider whether or not one of Aaron's favorite musicians, City and Color, is a member of the Keep Canada Weird Army. So let's get into it. Handsome Aaron Airport. How are you, my friend? I am well, friend. How are you? Uh, let's see. I got no complaints. Honestly, I'm good. Okay. It, was a, it was a beautiful day today. I'm well rested. I have a lovely cup of tea and it's in a clear glass, which I like because that way when you add the milk to the tea, you get to see this whole experience of uh-huh. light and color. And now I can just enjoy sipping on it. So yeah, I'm good. How, uh, what's up with you? What's new? Well, I'm I'm drinking I'm I'm drinking my usual my uh, zero sugar zero caffeine Coca Cola. Okay, it's becoming a thing. Well, it's been a thing. It's I uh, it's it's my favorite pop now hmm. because there's no caffeine, there's no sugar, and no regrets. You know, mm, I like that. That should be their motto: no caffeine, yeah. no sugar, no regrets. No, no sugar, no caffeine, no regrets. Yeah, I don't work for Coca Cola, however. I should. You are available. If the call, if the phone rings, you'll answer it, right? If the price is right, mm-hmm. I'll be there. Um, let's just jump right into it here. We got to keep Canada weird tonight. We got a lot of stories. It's been a weird week. Some some utter nonsense has played out across this great country over the last seven days. But to get us hyped up, let's hear from a listener. Uh, this should start us off on a positive, with a bit of a positive breeze behind us. Uh, we called out to listeners in the past asking, if you aren't in Canada, why the hell do you listen? Uh, Mara has, Mara wanted to weigh in on why she listens. Listen to this. Hey Jordan, this is Mara from Oklahoma in the States. And I'm responding to your question about why So many U.S. listeners are interested in Keep Canada Weird. Um, First of all, I think a lot of us just share the same odd sense of humor. But my reason for listening, and please don't put me on encounters with creeps for this, but I just think you and Aaron just have little cutie voices, and I like to listen to you guys talk. And I like your jokes, and I think it's real precious that you call him Handsome Aaron. I'm sure there's a backstory to that that I've missed. But yeah, that's why this Oklahoman is here. And stay weird, keep up the good work, and I will keep listening. Thank you, Mara. I like that. Does that make you feel good? Oh, she thinks we have little cooty voices. <laughs> oh, yeah. She wakes up weird, cooty voices. Yes. Um, she must tune into the live recordings because uh, I think she she understood that the handsome in Aaron Airport. She's like, there must be some backstory because I tuned into the show and man, it's he's not a, hideous. Yeah, <laughs> it's not descriptive. <laughs> yeah, it should be uh, Aaron Troll Airport. That was uh, some subtle shade from Mara. Uh, I enjoyed that uh, that voicemail. That made me feel good. She liked our jokes. That's the first time anyone said that. She liked our jokes. We don't really have jokes. It's more yeah. work. Just our, well, I'm funny looking now that she knows. I know she's tuned into the live stream. Yeah. Uh, she gets air in airports. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's fine if she wants to feel that way. Oh. You're speechless. You were just, we both stopped talking at the exact same I was, time. I was just, giving you a minute to stretch out. I the, was giving you a minute to stretch your your yoga body. Um, <laughs> we got a lot to get into, and we will have a lot of voicemails tonight. We're get, we're getting inundated, and we desperately need to catch up and produce a Keep Canada Weird mailbag. Aaron and I have tentatively committed to, to tomorrow to record that, so... Uh, that is coming. We are going to catch up, but we got a whole bunch of voicemails tonight. But we also have some weird stories to break down. We had 
Rob Schneider bombing in Regina. We had a burglary in uh, in Kelowna. In Kelowna, that is very newsworthy. We're going to talk about a bear, and we're going to hop on the magic school bus, which appears to be lo- alive and well in Guelph, Ontario. Get us started here, and where do you want to start with this? Let's start with Schneider. You want to get right into the big show? Let's do it. Uh, I'm excited for this story for a lot of reasons. This is uh, when we get to the end of the episode, we'll decide our favorite story. But I think this is going to be kind of the favorite. Uh, We've talked in the past about the city of Regina. Uh, Most recently, we talked about Regina's tourism division's attempt to rebrand as Experience Regina, the city that rhymes with fun. Well, the fact that the city's name rhymes with the re- with the female reproductive organ is maybe the only thing that it has going for it. Because even Regina's controversies suck. And there's one playing out right now. American comedian and former Saturday Night Live cast member Rob Schneider was the headlining guest at a Hospitals of Regina Foundation fundraiser this past Saturday night. An odd choice of talent, but it probably turns out worse than most people would expect. During the performance, as many attendees stormed out of the room, an event organizer demanded that Schneider end his performance early and leave the stage. In the days since, there have been apologies and mass wiping of any reference to the event on the Hospital of Regina Foundation's social media. Let's listen to a news clip, then we can break this one down. The Hospitals of Regina Foundation has issued an unconditional apology for jokes that were told at a fundraising event this past weekend. The organization held its Four Seasons Ball at the Conexus Arts Centre in Regina on Saturday. The event's main entertainment was actor and comedian Rob Schneider, who recently did a woke-free comedy special on Fox Nation. I really felt strongly after seeing many people, some were in tears, some were, you know, incredibly upset, Um, people were leaving the room that I just said to myself, I I can't sit by and do nothing. We were all here at Conexus uh, for an amazing event to support the Hospitals of Regina Foundation. The main act of the night was uh, Rob Schneider from TV, movies, whatever. Within probably 45 seconds, he, uh, you know, started sharing things about, you know, being, you know, very anti-vaccinations, um, very against trans folks, um, even quite a few misogynistic things, I would say. So I went up and, and asked to speak to the organizers of the event. At first, they were incredibly uh, dejective and sort of saying, well, we're not going to do anything. And we hired this guy and lots of people are laughing. So you know, why would we shut him down? And I sort of made a case to say, you know, not only is this completely inappropriate and and offensive and and really filled filled with hatred, um, but it's also, you know, the first day of pride. We have to recognize what that day means to people that, you know, especially in a hospital setting where people you know, go through gender affirming care and reproductive care and fertility treatments, all of those sorts of things. And and that's being challenged and mocked and laughed at when fundraising for that type of an organization. It's so not okay. In a statement, the foundation says, we do not condone, accept, endorse, or share Mr. Schneider's positions. It goes on to say, it asked Schneider to cut his set short on Saturday night. The foundation says it offered an apology that night and reiterates this sincere and unconditional apology for any offense caused. All references to Schneider's appearance have been removed from the organization's website. Schneider did not return a request for comment. Ouch. I'm excited to break this one down with you because we've gone through so many stories that you're forced to talk on and not be an expert. This one you kind of are because you've the type of work that Rob Schneider would have been doing at this kind of charity fundraiser. You've done that sort of thing. You've been hired to do like kind of stand up or MC events of this nature. I I remember you preparing for one related to like logging or something. I think that was the uh, poultry convention in uh, in the Annapolis Valley. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've like what he would have been doing is he was paid to perform at a charity event. So that wouldn't be your typical stand up routine. Like this is not like cancel culture or anti woke or whatever kind of stuff. Like the, the event he was performing at would have been different in style than him playing at a comedy club or something. It would, which is why it's so strange that they hired him to begin with. I can't, 
I mean, and obviously his material is all over the place. I mean, it wouldn't take long to to be able to search out and find what kind of material that Rob Schneider delivers. So mm -hmm. why they asked him to perform at this particular fundraiser makes zero sense to me. I can't wrap my mind around it. Could it be like Regina's just not a hot spot that's going to lure in the big talent? Rob Schneider, like like him or not, like at least at one time he was like a, a big name who was associated with a, a lot of like famed actors and comedians and stuff. So maybe it was just a case of like we have this guy who's willing to do it for a price that's fairly low and he's a big enough name that'll look good on a poster. Let's see what happens. And they roll the dice and I can imagine the kind of set he, he performed in front of a hospital fundraiser. I can imagine the kind of stuff that was said and the sort of reaction <laughs> that you would get from that. Yeah, and it doesn't affect Rob Schneider at all. Like, none of this is going to affect his career. Uh, he still got paid for the event 100%. There's no, they would have cut his set short and he would have been like, well, I'm going home early, I guess. But he's still getting paid the exact same amount because there's no way legally they'd be able to to get away with that. They they paid for him. They paid for Rob Schneider. He gave them Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider wasn't appropriate for that event. And then they asked him to leave early and he still cashed his check. And for any audience that is interested in Rob Schneider, that type of incident is only going to make them like him even more. Yeah, it's true. Like there would have been people offended in there and there were also were probably people like that were that would have rea their reaction would be like that was so rob schneider yeah yeah like like what a rob schneider thing to happen here in regina absolutely absolutely <laughs> so i just the organizers of the events i can't really understand what they were trying to accomplish now it's not like well we were getting jerry seinfeld and then jerry seinfeld went rogue and started doing a bunch of anti-vax jokes you know like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At, at a hospital foundation fundraiser <laughs> the, the whole thing is insane but it's been a big deal i've seen it all over the news all week and it's in its international news just the fact that he got pulled off the stage or whatever happened uh, pulled off mm -hmm. is probably exaggeration he probably got tapped on the shoulder with like cut it politely out. Yeah. yeah do you mind leaving early yeah. we'll still pay you i'll take off yeah uh, yeah this is being referred to as a con uh, as a controversy. Is this a controversy or is this just as close as Regina gets to anyone caring about what happens there? This is Regina wanting to make it controversial so that Regina can be just as well known as Rob Schneider is. <laughs> well, Rob Schneider versus Regina. Is it a controversy? Is it not? Should anyone care? I guess the jury's still out on that, but I do like... Uh, a, a semi-notable American celebrity making their way to Canada only to have the whole thing, I don't know, implode in on itself. Uh, like you say, I don't think it's going to affect him. I think if anything, it's an embarrassment for the organizers of this fundraiser for certainly not doing their due, gil their due diligence. But I would expect nothing less or nothing more the, from the power brokers in Regina, Saskatchewan. Yeah, yeah. Well... You have more against Regina than I do, so we'll just state that for the record. But I'm I'm radicalized by Madeline Klein. She hates it there, and we talk a lot. So I'm just I've never been to Regina. I honestly I I don't have any I don't have skin in the game. I've never really had much of an opinion about Regina um, until this show. Okay, and and we've had some negative storylines about Regina kind of come across our desks. So. I'm still trying to keep a very open mind about Regina. I don't want to alienate and, and judge an entire area of people. Are you sure you're not just doing damage control because of the damage you caused last week? Um, I'm unaware of any damage that I did. Okay, well, don't let me tell you about it. Let's hear from Pat from Peterborough. He's a listener of the show. At least he was. I don't know if he'll still tune in, but he's noticed a change in the show. He's noticed things going way downhill. And I'm happy to say he's pointing the finger squarely at you and some of the things you've been doing on air last week that is driving him away. Listen to this. Give him hell, Pat. 
Hey, Jordan and Aaron. It's uh, Pat from Peterborough again. Um, I'm just calling about the uh, Canadian uh, Canadian geese story, but the migration. Um, as a long-time listener, I think it was established a long time ago that uh, you guys wouldn't be using Google on this show. And I noticed Aaron had to Google whether Canadian geese migrate or not. I don't know. I just... Uh, that's questionable. Uh, like, are you guys changing the way you do things on this podcast? Let me know. Also, a new a new nickname for Aaron might be um, AI Aaron because he needs to use Google all the time instead of just going down to the library. Thanks, guys. Bye. You want to say anything? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I I have something to say here, uh, Pat. You've got a very good ear. We did say that a number of times in the early days, how we wouldn't use Google. I've never Googled anything. Uh, you Google things before the show starts. Exactly. Yeah. I don't Google before the show starts. I have recently the odd time because if there's something that I'm just so curious about, I just need to find out right away. But 99% of the time I do I guarantee my ignorance and I stand by it. Uh, I like to to shoot at the hip uh, without researching whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I am going to make a, a public apology here to Pat. Wow. Uh, and, and, I, and I would and I don't normally do that uh, to listeners who call me out on things. I usually dig my heels in and and I really just put my ignorance on display and blame the listener. That's usually my go-to. The customer is always wrong in, in my school of business. <laughs> so that usually is my policy. But in this case, Pat is right. I did say I would never Google so that I can be as ignorant as possible. And I'm going to go back to that policy and and I'm going to get a Google jar. So anytime Pat calls in and leaves a voicemail catching me googling i'm gonna put a quarter in that jar mm -hmm. i like it all right thanks pat for saying what we've all been thinking i've been thinking it myself and i didn't want to muddy the waters here um the emotional waters well that's because you're you're a coward and 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 pat is a is a real a real proud and brave soldier of keep canada weird Let's talk quickly about the burglar, the burglary suspect that was caught making Sundays in a Kelowna restaurant. Uh, if you have it in front of you there, you can you can read this. This is like we always enjoy a dumb Canadian crime story. Well, this lunatic with a sweet tooth in Kelowna delivers. You want to read this one? Police were called to a business on Highway 33 West in the Rutland area around 4 a.m. Sunday where the alarm had been triggered. When the police officer arrived, he witnessed the suspect making a chocolate sundae behind the counter. Kelowna RCMP spokesperson Sergeant Judith Bertrand said in a news release Monday, the suspect was taken into custody without incident. What a what a news headline that is. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Nothing happened. <laughs> Uh, the detachment also provided a photo of the Sunday in question melting on a countertop. The business is not named, but there is a Dairy Queen on the block where the break-in occurred, and the Sunday appears to be in one of the chain's cups. That's investigative it's, journalism here. It is, yeah. Well, that's just somebody who goes to Dairy Queen all the time. With, uh, <laughs> speak from experience from eating eight Sundays a day. <laughs> that's a Dairy Queen cup. <laughs> Uh, the suspect allegedly broke in through the front door and tried to steal from a locked fridge before helping themselves to the frozen treat. The suspect will be required to attend court in the next few weeks as significant damage was caused to the store, the statement from the detachment said. Hmm. So with this, 4 a.m., early in the morning, middle of the night on a Sunday. So this is a... Uh, it's 4 a.m. on Sunday, so this is really to the suspect. I'm sure it's super late at night on Saturday night is how they're viewing this. For whatever reason, they just could not 
pass up the opportunity to kick down the door of probably Dairy Queen. They tried to get into a locked freezer, which I only imagine is when you first walk in Dairy Queen, there's the freezers with all the ice cream cakes and the DQ sandwiches and the dilly bars. I think they tried to get into that and that was locked. And then they realized they could just make themselves a Sunday and they went for it. It's very much in the same vein as like, uh, the butter tart theft. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's uh, the same story. Just it's the same story. Yeah. And it, it's just late at night coming home from the bar, you know, what will be awesome an ice cream cake. Uh, it's that kind of a thing. And, and they're, and they're in a state of mind where they're prepared to do whatever it takes to get that. And you, what do you mean? Dairy queen is closed. I'm drunk right now. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you generally, though, a Dairy Queen is going to be in an area where there's other fast food restaurants around. Is there not a McDonald's within a block? But, but you can't control what specific craving you have that's a when good you're point. intoxicated. Like you see the you see the string uh, of fast food restaurant lights, you know, coming down the street as you're walking and and all of them might speak to you and, and call to you. But only one wins. Which one will I break into? It's <laughs> going to be the Dairy Queen. And I think this person did the right thing. And you know what? If the, if the police didn't get there at the time that they did, he might have finished the Sunday and then left the money on the counter for the Sunday and, and then it, left. That's a good point. So his major issue was not, hey, I'm here to steal money. Hey, I'm here to break in and cause damage on purpose. His issue is, listen... There's nothing open. I want I want an ice cream. I want to pay for it. I don't want to steal an ice cream, but I am going to break in and 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 take the ice cream and make it myself and then leave the money on the counter. With the exception of Costco, Dairy Queen ice cream is like my favorite ice cream. I love but it's a good ice cream for fast food ice cream. For fast food ice cream, but I think Costco, I know you don't got that in Cape Breton. Costco's ice cream is just divine. And it's huge. My my kids like getting it because they get like the the cone and like the ice cream section is like taller than they are. So it's a uh, yeah, it's awesome. I'm getting hungry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't prefer you bragging on the show about having a Costco in your area mm. and its ice cream and how delicious it mm. is. Don't even get me started on IKEA and their coffee because that's you wouldn't expect it. IKEA has bomb coffee too. Yeah, I've had the coffee at IKEA. Yeah, it, it didn't. I mean, it was fine coffee, but I didn't. Uh, you wouldn't podcast it about it. it. No, I didn't waste people's time and talk about it <laughs> uh, on a, on a podcast where we're supposed to be keeping the country weird. That's a good point. Well, let's get back to our important work then. I think I can probably take a couple stories and combine them into one segment that's focusing on an important issue, which is that of the animal uprising, which I feel the need to explain it every time for new listeners. But Aaron and I and the listeners of Keep Canada Weird have identified a trend across Canada, but more so across the entire world, in which animals appear to be taking back what's rightfully theirs, planet Earth. And we refer to it as the animal uprising. We've received several reports from listeners of incidents related to animal uprisings, and I have a news story from last week clearly connected to the animal uprising. But first, let's go across the pond to England and catch up with Ruth, a listener who wants to talk about Canada geese. Listen to this. Hello, this is a message from England. This is Ruth. I've just listened to your latest episode about the Canada geese. And they are very much here in the United Kingdom. They migrate here every year. I'm not sure why, because the weather's terrible. But I just wanted to share that I have a goose story. So um, and I think it might protect me from the animal uprising. Where I live by the River Thames, I saved a baby Canada goose gosling from being drowned. It got caught up in a, a boat race with the... Uh, I don't think they are canoes, but I'm going to say canoes where they have a cox. It's not canoes, is it? But boats with a cox at the front, a person shouting at them and the people rowing. Um, the baby gosling got caught up in the in the race and hit on the head by the oar of one of the rowers. And it was horrible, actually, because its neck was kind of it looked broken. So its head was under the water 
and the mum and the dad were like honking for help and the support boat went to save the gosling thankfully and for some reason came over to the garden where I was sitting in my aunt's garden and gave me a soaking wet broken necked gosling to look after I didn't know what to do with it so I held it upside down and a load of water came out of its mouth and mum and dad were watching from the other side of the lake mum and dad Canada goose um so we looked after the goose a lot more water came out and it started to sort of revive but its head was just dangling down I wanted to put it back in the water and and send it back to its parents because the race had by that time finished but I was worried about it so we took it to a swan sanctuary down the road they took it in and we did find out that the gosling survived it hadn't broken its neck it just has like a muscle in its neck which got sprained or damaged and so it couldn't hold its neck up it made a recovery and the next time I went to see my aunt the geese came over to say hi and as a thank you they shit all over my aunts um they like to poo there and even more so since we saved the life of their baby and when they came over recently and we were feeding them they did mention how upset they were about the rotisserie chickens in the woods. They didn't know who had done it, but they were grateful to be in England because we don't do that in England. There has not been any instances of rotisserie chickens being abandoned and left in woodland. Uh, so maybe they come to England to get away from those dangers. I don't know. But they come a long way. I don't know how far it is. Maybe you could look it up. But not now, Aaron. Don't look it no. up. <laughs> I Googled it before uh, to see. Because yeah. I, I was thinking, why would a Canada goose migrate to England? Like, you'd think they'd have basically the same climate. And what I found was that after the Second World War, they spread across the UK. However, occasionally wild Canadian geese do go astray during migration and reach the United Kingdom. It's usually a single Canada geese bird that gets mixed up with a flock of pink-footed geese, which are often found in England. Yeah, there's so much going on in that voicemail that oh, I don't it's... even know where to begin. Like, there's there's a lot of boat terms that probably <laughs> need to be censored in in the <laughs> I know recording of this. I'm going to say canoes, where they have a cox. It's not canoes, is it? But boats with a cox at the front, a person shouting at them. There's a lot of poop. Yeah, it's um, a lot of poop mentioned. Um, it's a violent story. It's, 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 she's like an accidental hero where the boat comes over and it's like to basically a random stranger. Yeah, who's sitting in a garden? Sitting in a, probably a beautiful <laughs> garden, sipping tea because it's England. <laughs> and they're like, here, you deal with this. I think it's next broken here. <laughs> Just here you go. <laughs> and she does. But then there's, just so happens to be a swan sanctuary <laughs> just down the road within walking distance. It's just like, oh, I'll just take him to the swan sanctuary that I could spit at from here. I, I never thought about that aspect of it. But yeah, there's there's a lot going on there. But uh, I appreciate it, Ruth. Um, if, the, if you do hear the swans talking about the rotisserie chickens in Canada... Nah, I'm, I'm sure we're spreading through this show and through the listeners of the show, but uh, they're all coming back. And uh, as far as we know, there have not been any incidents of rotisserie chickens being found in the forests of Canada. So hopefully that was a one-off incident of some radical extremist. The more I think about that situation, just the more outrageous it, it feels like, <laughs> <laughs> there just so happens to be a swan sanctuary <laughs> just down the street uh, uh, it, in in a circumstance of the of randomness where there's a Canada goose who gets injured during a <laughs> in, boat race in England in England <laughs> and then they pick him up and they drop him at this stranger's lap She's like, I don't know what to do with this. However, there is a swan sanctuary. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a roller coaster. It blows my mind. It's yeah. a roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, well, let's. Th that was the prequel to a series to a story related to an animal uprising incident that just took place last week in a place called Rossland, British Columbia.
Katie Rice heard some banging in her living room at about 1 a.m. She didn't think much of it as her nine-year-old daughter was having a sleepover with a friend in the room next door. But when the banging intensified, Katie got out of bed to check out what was going on. And what she found will forever add her name to the unfortunate list of those directly affected by the animal uprising took down all the blinds. In a matter of an hour, this home was destroyed. So he threw a chest. You can see there's a chair overturned. Katie Rice's life flipped upside down right along with it. It was just really overwhelming to see all the damage. It happened in the early hours Sunday morning. While Rice didn't see the intruder enter her house, she could hear it. My daughter was having a sleepover, so I did hear some banging. I figured maybe it's the kids or there was a bear outside. But bearing in mind, Rice lives in the safe and rural community of Rosalind. She figured this is not your average break and enter. And then I heard some large bangs and then I realized that there was a bear in the house. This could have been the point of entry. Like any mama bear would do, Rice grabbed her pets and rushed to her daughter's room where she and her friend were fast asleep. All three of them hid in this bedroom with a dresser in front of the door. They called 911, then waited quietly for help to arrive. They could hear the bear breathing and panting and panicking. It became clear the animal was somehow trapped inside the home, leaving a path of destruction. Urinating feces all over the carpets because he was scared. He ripped up the basement flooring. He also ripped out like a huge chunk of drywall by the door trying to get out. 30 minutes later, police arrived on scene, kicking down the door, allowing the bear to escape. According to Trail RCMP, the family did the right thing at the right time by calling police and sheltering in place. The BC Conservation Office Service was notified about the incident. Went through the fridge. It's definitely um, good to be mindful that bears are out and they are um, looking for food as all wild animals will do. They're close by to us because we live in wildlife country. Rice's insurance is covering the restoration work, but it will be at least a week before she can return home. This is my daughter's playroom where he really made a mess. Forever grateful, it was her house bearing the brunt of the damage. No one was injured. It's pretty amazing. And I'm just happy everyone's okay. I'll be honest, that's a terrifying story. Hearing the bear, like, yeah. you know, there's the, the commotion. You go down there and you see a, your place is trash and the bear's there. As you shelter in place, you're just hearing like dishes cracking, the walls and floors being tor torn up. But over over all of that, you just hear the sound of the bear breathing. Like <laughs> that's terrifying to me. It's like a nature horror movie. It's like an animal it's, uprising horror movie. It's also happening during a child's sleepover. Yeah, but imagine. Your daughter is having a sleepover, so, you know, five or six of her friends are over, right? And when they're in your house, when their parents drop them off there, there's a certain expectation that you're going to keep them alive, right? <laughs> Not eaten as a minimum. So imagine the worst happens here and imagine... Oh. Imagine one or two or three of them get eaten by the bear. <laughs> Hate to laugh. And then having to make that phone call. Yeah. Be like, be like, yeah, um, how'd the party go? Well, your daughter has been eaten alive by a bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of worst case scenario, right? Like, I hate. I guess it could be worse. Like, the. The girls had a great time, but it, yeah. Yeah, your yeah. Your daughter, she got she, eaten. Yeah, just your night. daughter. She was the slowest. <laughs> we all ran. She tripped, and it was her or us. So we, you know, we just kind of left her there to save our own lives. <laughs> but you would have done the same, obviously. Well, I don't know. I Yeah, I would have. A, be a bear in a house, the. For people who are listening to that news clip, the damage the bear did, it looked like a wrecking ball went through that thing. Like the house was demolished. Even in the news clip, they they reference like the bear like throwing stuff around. It was picking up furniture and just chucking it around the room, tearing – like why would the bear tear the floor up? That just seems like unnecessarily – unnecessary damage. Uh, yeah, it, it seemed a little too much I think. Um, <laughs> but imagine – 
the police officers. We covered a story before where these police officers, I can't remember where it was, but they had to respond to a raccoon incident mm. where a raccoon had gotten in somebody's house and it was a, it was a whole production and the police officers had to deal with it. And so this is another circumstance where it's like you get the call, like it took a half an hour for them to get there. Mm. So they're sitting in the locked bedroom with the dresser in front of the door for <laughs> half an hour listening to this giant bear just destroy their house outside and i'm sure the dresser would not have stopped the bear but no it's by the um, grace of god that thing didn't come upstairs poke it around but the police officers probably took a half an hour because they probably were googling on the job like i was doing like how to deal with a bear inside your house like we're not trained bear experts were police officers yeah, and deal with human beings mostly yeah and their guns wouldn't like a, a handgun that a cop would carry but i don't think it'd do crap to a bear so it's you know two cops with unless they had special like strong guns or something but yeah it's, i'd be as a cop man the, the stuff they have to get into they're in Kelowna arresting the guy with the sunday at dairy queen then they're running mm -hmm. over to rossland to deal with like the bear that's taken the family like hostage basically the the bear yeah, invasion and they're just saying to themselves like how much do we make a year and we're <laughs> gonna go deal with a violent bear <laughs> yeah it's uh it's something else we need to lighten this up though i got a story for you or I got a, a voicemail for you that I, I I'm very excited to play because I think you're going to be going to be interested in this. I, there's going to be a lot to talk about in this voicemail, but this comes from an American listener who plugged the show "Keep Canada Weird" to kind of an unlikely figure and got a surprising response. Listen to this. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, this is Timothy from Arizona, United States. I've been meaning to call about this interesting. I, I one of my favorite musicians of my entire life is from St. Catharines, Ontario. I'm sure you're aware of him, Dallas Green, City and Color. Well, I met him after a show and I didn't know what to say. So I said, uh, do you listen to uh, Keep Canada Weird? And he says, Jordan, a handsome Aaron, of course, and Tim Hortons. I thought that was pretty cool. I just wanted to tell you that, but love you guys. Peace. So let's be let, let's just take this head on. You're a big fan of City and Color, right? Yeah, yeah, I really like City and Color. Yeah, great musician, you know, song singer. Uh yeah, I I I I've, I've really enjoyed his career for it's it's been he's been City and Color for since the mid 2000s, I think. And I think this voicemail from Tim, I think that's accurate because if you're an American down in Arizona and you wanted to like punk us by acting like some celebrity knew who we were, you wouldn't pick city and color. You'd be like, I t I ran into the the bros from Nickelback or, you know, like you, you wouldn't know city in color to the point of just pulling that name out of like, a, out of the mm -hmm. ether as a Canadian musician. I believe this guy. I believe it too, because he even referenced like uh, city and color where he where he's from, and and it seemed pretty genuine that he's a, a Dallas Green fan for sure. Uh, I want city and color to uh, prove this correct and and leave a voicemail because you know uh, city and color we will play your voicemail on the show and you will get some keep Canada weird swag sent to you oh, what else could true. we send yeah <laughs> what else could we send city and color for leaving a voicemail like what what do you think we could offer him that would uh that would entice him well, tempt him i think you've already said it we have the keep canada weird badge that makes anyone who leaves a voicemail an official correspondent and inducts them to the keep canada weird army mr green would love to have one of those badges applied to his guitar case, if not his actual guitar. But you know this. I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm doubling down. I'm going to send him a T-shirt. A T-shirt, yeah, a T-shirt and a badge. Because you're right, it would be perfect. The badge would be perfect on a guitar case. However, we may have walked into some controversy here, possibly because then that's going to force City and Color to publicly Ooh. state their distaste for Tim Hortons. 
Yeah. Oh, they got a decision. I to wonder make. if there's going to be any uh, potential issues there. We'll see them like uh, uh, sit. We'll hear City and Color dropped from major festival mm -hmm. uh, when key sponsor Tim Hortons demands yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe maybe there are some Tim Hortons funded projects that he is involved in, just yeah. not to support Tim Hortons, but to support the project. I don't know. So maybe. He won't be headlining Timbit Palooza. No, no, he won't be uh, headlining Wood Garbage Coffee Stock. <laughs> uh, but if we don't hear from Dallas Green, the only possible reason is due to the influence of Tim Hortons uh, probably threatening him. So, mm -hmm. and and Tim Hortons uh, is aggressive with their threats, and um, yeah, I would like to, uh, but I would I would like. Dallas to to call in, leave a voicemail, and officially become a member of the Keep Canada Weird Army mm. and an official correspondent. Mm. I like it. Well, let's move on to our final story. Uh, this one I'm going to call the Magic School Bus of Guelph, Ontario. You'll see why. This involves, um, I'm guessing, a science teacher of a school in Guelph who takes their pursuit of giving children students a hands-on experience to the next level uh, much akin to what the magic school bus tried to do for children on television uh, we'll read the art if you had the article you can read this one or i can you did the last one i don't yeah, want to I'll get give you it a read yeah yeah, yeah i'll it. give it a read an unconventional field trip in the city of guelph ontario led to a scolding of two teachers on thursday just after 11 a.m., police received a report of someone lifting a manhole cover and crawling inside. Officers and firefighters arrived on scene, prepared to rapple into the sewer system when two teachers from a nearby high school informed them that the figure who was seen lifting the manhole cover was one of their students. What? Why? Say what? The teachers explained that they had taken their class on a field trip exploring the stormwater management system. The high school teachers were reprimanded for the field trip and told of the safety concerns of taking a class into the stormwater management system. So we don't know what's going to come of this, if it was approved. I think the story on it, on its surface, though, is uh, it's kind of crazy that a teacher would do that. But I do think it is a valuable like bit of information and learning experience. I would love to go down to the sewer systems. Not the sewer systems where like toilets go, but like the wastewater management systems under a major city. I'm a, I'm a bit of a weirdo and I love drainage and seeing how engineers are able to manage the flow of rainwater away from our buildings and off of our streets and all this stuff. I'd love to go down there and see it, but I certainly wouldn't take a class of high school students down there that's like, okay that's pretty nuts so tell me this then uh, what's your favorite drain and then follow-up question why is it the french drain it is the french drain <laughs> yeah of course it is it's everybody's uh, favorite drain no I, I like a french drain but i also like when the downspout that comes off your roof doesn't just dump into the ground next to your house it actually goes into the ground and then comes out somewhere like you know say 20 feet away from your house so uh all the water that lands on your roof ends up like on the other side of your yard through us through a network of underground pipes i enjoy that sort of thing maybe yeah, that's the I, 40 and me talking yeah no i think there's more going on there <laughs> than just your age but um i don't think this was what they said it was oh because this this sounds like an 80s movie, an 80s comedy movie, similar to like Adventures in Babysitting or something like that, where they go out on a field trip and something happens. Someone goes missing, whatever, and that snowballs into this crazy adventure around the city uh, where they're trying to find their classmate and they're ending up in all this hijinks and misadventures and, and all of these wacky scenarios are playing out one of those scenarios found them having to go into a sewer looking for their friend or concluding one of those misadventures and then getting caught by the police and them having to come up with some excuse on the spot and them <laughs> saying oh no we're 
yeah, we're not we're not doing anything weird down here. We're 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 on a field trip. Yeah, yeah, field trip, yeah. and and it's and it's about waste management. So we're going <laughs> down into the sewer and, and 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 looking at 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 the 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 poop and the pee and uh, yeah, and I whatever the, else. And I picture the oh, the no, the man. teachers. He's like holding a bag with like a bright glowing something inside it, and the cops like, "What's in the bag, sir?" And he's like, "Oh, nothing." And he puts it behind his back. Or yeah, something. yeah. This is just yeah. in, we were down looking around. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I got a bit of Ninja Turtles. Of course, the Ninja Turtles were, uh, their home base was down in the in the sewers. And I remember as a kid when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were a big thing. Every kid in my neighborhood like dreamed of getting down into the sewers to maybe meet the Ninja Turtles. Thankfully, the the cast iron lids or whatever steel lids iron lids on the top of the manholes in Cape Breton were heavy enough that my friends and I were unable to get down there and probably die trying to meet mutated turtles. Yeah, that's not how you want to die. No, that's I um, that's not how I'm going to do it. But uh, yeah, shout out to the brave teacher. If it was actually a school field trip, good on you for doing something nuts. If there's more to the story, uh, maybe, I, and I think there might be more to the story, I don't think they're going to come forward and tell us. So I would like to hear from Keep Canada Weird listeners, what the hell you think was going on? If you have a theory, let us know. But we may not hear about that because it seems our listeners, the listeners of Keep Canada Weird, are all hung up on birds. Our last story of the night, our last voicemail of the night, is going to come from Mara, who we heard earlier. She was uh, the one who thought our voices were cute and she liked our jokes, the, the creepy voicemail earlier. Uh, mm-hmm. she, she also wanted to share an animal uprising story from her state of Oklahoma. And I think it's a state, not a city. We screwed Don't that up. Don't you dare we screwed Google it. It. I'm not Googling it. We screwed that up before, <laughs> though. But uh, here's what Mara has to say. This is Mara from Oklahoma again. I have an update about the animal uprising. Um, You guys have been talking about birds a lot lately, and I am feeling concerned. We have a situation developing on my front porch, and there is a bird nest kind of up in the rafters on my porch, and this bird has come and laid eggs and hatched several baby birds this spring, but what's got me concerned is that there are multiple full-sized looking birds up there in that nest. And I'm pretty sure these little guys can fly now, but they're just sitting there staring out the door every time I come out. So I don't know what they're planning, but I definitely think it's part of the animal uprising. And if you hear of Oklahoma being overtaken by the birds, just know it probably started on my porch. Thanks. Pray for me. I think Mara's going to need more than prayers. That does sound creepy. It's like the the baby birds, you know, the, the bird builds a nest, has its babies. But when the babies grow up, they shouldn't just all be sitting in the nest staring at her door. That's a little weird. Yeah, but these are Gen Z birds. Oh, so yeah. They don't they're work. not leaving the nest anytime soon. They don't work for nothing. They want it handed to them. Mm-hmm, they have mm-hmm. no perseverance yeah yeah so i uh, expect those birds to be staying in those nests for a long time uh and you're pretty much stuck with them yeah you might as well bring out some food i guess and just climb up there and start looking after them They're your problem now you need to validate their existence now <laughs> much like ruth who was hand at the broken neck Canada goose. I can't get over yeah. that. Um, well, yeah. I think I think we've done our job here tonight. We've been across the country. We've been across the world. Oklahoma, I think Arizona, of course, England. We've gone through a lot. Uh, we've maybe got a pat on the back from one of your favorite singers. And, I, and I'm making a point to say your favorite singer. I have nothing against City and Color, but I really only like ACDC and Kiss. But I don't think he'll be offended by the guy who only likes ACDC and Kiss not being like a listener of his music. Yeah, but you might have something in common because I I read on uh, City and Color's Wikipedia that he's really into 
to drains and drainage. Oh, that's a section so, on think, Wikipedia right mm, after his discography yeah. and musical influences. It's you know under after musical influences is uh, the whole drainage section. Yeah, yeah, and it goes on for for quite a lot of detail. <laughs> uh, well, I'll have to check that out when we wrap it up here. But that said, let's wrap it up here, Aaron. Yeah, yeah, I'll wrap it with you. Well, with that done, our work here is done. So Ansem Aaron Airport, until next time. Jordan, until next time. I am going to check out City and Color. I, when I edit or do artwork or whatever, I listen to music on Alexa. So uh, I'm going to check out one of his albums tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, go go through it and give it a sample. And, and Jordan, until next time, as I sit here staring at my shiny red can of no sugar, no caffeine, no regrets, Coca-Cola. It's also staring at you, shiny, smiley, wonderful podcaster. No bus stops, no Canada geese, no regrets. I like it. I want to thank you for helping Aaron and I fulfill our mission to keep Canada weird, but let us also call out to you for even greater support in this work. If something weird happens in your neck of the woods, we want to hear about it. As well, if you have any thoughts, theories, or opinions on anything we discussed tonight, we want to hear that too. The best way to reach us is by sending a voice memo using the built-in app, which can be found at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. And to sweeten the deal for you a little bit, if your voice is aired on the show, you'll qualify for a Keep Canada Weird swag pack. So once you hear your voice message played, all you got to do is email me at nighttimepodcast at gmail.com, give me your mailing address, and I'll have something sent out to you right away. We're excited to hear from you. Now, before we part here, let me end with some thanks. First, a big thanks to Aaron for sharing another evening with me and with you, the listeners of Nighttime. A shout out to the internet's favorite cult leader, Unicole, who provides the intro and outro voiceovers, and Monty Data, who provides the outro version of O Canada. And then lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you goes out to each and every one of you listening to Nighttime, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. Now on the topic of support, let me thank the newest subscribers to the premium feed. Carly, Emma, and Amy, thank you for going premium. And for anyone else who'd like to support the show, you can help us out here in a variety of ways. First of all, a premium feed subscription costs just a couple dollars a month, and that money funds the creation of new episodes. But it'll also give you those episodes two days early, give them to you ad-free, and give you access to a full back catalog of nighttime episodes. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can go premium right now at patreon.com slash nighttime podcast. And even if you don't want to go premium, you can still help support the show by sharing this episode on social media and letting all your like-minded friends know why they should listen. Your support in keeping Canada weird is very much appreciated. So until next time, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let me know if you see anything weird. Keep Canada Weird is written, hosted, and produced by the Nighttime Podcast. And now to our viewers and listeners everywhere. Good night. Something we started last week, and I, I want to go, I want to continue with this, is deciding the Keep Canada Weird story of the week. So we, of course, heard about Rob Schneider bombing in Regina. We heard about the bear in the house in BC, the magic school bus in Guelph, and the ice cream sundae robbery or burglary in Kelowna. And, of course, and then I guess we'll include all the voicemails we got. Do you have a favorite story of the week? And if so, why? Uh, well, certainly the city and color one would be pretty exciting if it were to be proven true. Um, but we'll need a certain potential Keep Canada Weird correspondent to call in and confirm that. Uh, outside of that one, my favorite story is the ice cream story. Mm -hmm. What uh, about it? It shows, it shows true Canadian weird character where I am going to commit a crime, but I don't really mean to hurt anybody. I'm just coming in. I just want a little bit of ice cream. I might even leave some money if I'm not interrupted by the cops. I think it's perfect. I'm thinking that pales in comparison to the 
Woman sitting in a garden, <laughs> being past, <laughs> being past a broken Canada goose. If it's, we're including voicemails, then that is the story of the night. Yeah, it has the to Swan be. Sanctuary just down the street. You can't <laughs> get. The only issue is that it happened in England. But that's just another. But it layer. involves a Canada geese. So yeah, yeah, okay, we can we can claim ownership of that story, and declare it the story of the week. Okay, it that's it. Thank you, Ruth.